20 years, we've seen uh, temperature going up, and you can see right on the landscape, we're getting lots of slumping, slumping up the lands, and if you go on a dumpster, you can see it really big, big areas. Here in the permafrost, there is all kinds of organic material opgeslagen, bevroren, but as it dooit, dan komen daar heel veel broeikasgassen bij vrij en die dragen dan op hun beurt weer bij aan extra opwarming. We started off small and then now they're huge, huge areas and they're all over that in the mountains now. Well, for me it's very interesting the the wall, a wall made of permafrost. It contains a lot of organic carbon that has been stored there for, for a long period of time. And now, as permafrost is thawing, if it degrades, it can end up back in the atmosphere. Wildlife is changing, bugs are changing, the vegetation is changing, which has always kind of happened, but it's happening so fast now. We know that there's twice as much carbon locked up in permafrost as there is carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So certainly there's the potential there for this carbon, if it's released as carbon dioxide, to have a really huge effect on greenhouse gases and climate warming. Even moose, if they get into that slump, they can't come out. It's almost like it's quicksand. Even researchers get pulled out of there. We have buildings that are shifting. A lot of buildings are built on uh, pilings. They're up and down, so you get a lot of movement. In the... It's going to change how they uh, construct things up here, that's for sure. There is that uncertainty associated with what the sleeping giant is going to look like, but certainly there's, there's a huge store. We only deal with things when we absolutely have to, as opposed to being ahead of the curve and saying, in 50 years from now, the permafrost melting is going to be a problem. We should probably do something. Preventative is always cheaper than reactive. You know what I mean? We have to survive today, but we have to plan for tomorrow.